inside this building are more than five decades of art and five decades of collecting from the 1950s to today. It can be bright, hopeful, controversial and stimulating, and sometimes all of that at the same time. This collection started with one couple's passionate curiosity about art. And this museum came from their passion to make that art publicly accessible to everyone. Eli and Edith Brode created this museum to share art with as many people as possible. But the journey to founding a major museum in Los Angeles from their roots in Michigan did not happen overnight. Edith, or Edie as she's known, has always had an interest in art, having discovered great artworks on public school trips to the Detroit Institute of Art. Her first acquisition was a Picasso. For 25 cents, she bought a postcard from a bookstore. Eli's drive to succeed propelled him quickly through public high school in Detroit. He went on to Michigan State University. Restless to get out and start working, he graduated with a degree in accounting and economics. He became the youngest CPA in Michigan history. Eli met Edie through a mutual friend, and after just a few dates, he proposed and she accepted. We were in love. They were married in 1954. I wasn't thinking about getting married. I was in a hurry to get married. I think Eli had more of a plan, you know, had a list. You know, <laughs> graduate school, get married. Have a family. Have a family, get a house, get a house, buy a dog. Throughout his life, Eli Brode has had four careers. The first one didn't last long. Newly married and with a baby on the way, Eli started his own practice, but quickly set his sights even higher, starting the home building company Kaufman & Brode. In that first year, they sold 120 homes in the flourishing suburbs of Detroit. Kaufman & Brode went public when Eli was only 28. Now with two sons, Eli and Edie moved with the company to Southern California in 1963. Edie began to explore the city's art scene, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Eli acquired and eventually transformed a sleepy life insurance company into a leading financial services firm called Sun America. He is the only person to create two Fortune 500 companies in entirely different industries, home building and retirement savings. After Eli sold Sun America in 1999, the Broads focus their energies 100% on giving back, especially to the city they had called home for over 40 years. Through their philanthropy, the Broads are committed to improving public schools, advancing medical research, and making the arts as accessible to as many people as possible. How did contemporary art become such an important part of their lives? The answer starts with Edie. Back to 1963. The Broads were settling into their new home here in Los Angeles. Edie fed her love of art by frequenting galleries and bookstores. 1960s Los Angeles was known for a budding counterculture art scene. La Cienega Boulevard was ripe with new and local talent as well as established heavy hitters. Edie started to collect prints and works on paper. Now when he returned from business trips, Eli was greeted by both his wife and her new acquisitions. At first, he didn't pay much notice, but as Edie's hobby grew, the names became familiar, and soon he too was hooked, bringing new ambition to Edie's pastime. A lot of ambition. In 1972, they purchased a Van Gogh. It cost six times as much as their first house. It was almost a century old and had to be kept away from damaging light. It lived in a drawer for half the year. Eli and Edie wanted art that told them something about the present and even the future. Inspired by lots of research and fellow collectors, they started buying art by living artists like Jasper Johns and Roy Lichtenstein. They eventually arranged a swap of that Van Gogh for a challenging and radical painting by Robert Rauschenberg. 
the seeds were planted that would grow into one of the world's most significant collections. The contemporary art housed right here at the Broad. Can walking contemporary art is art of our times? So you get to meet the artists, you get to understand how they see the world, which is very different than business people. You could meet the artist and have a dialogue during the time or a little after the work was being made. We found it appealing. The Broads acquired some of the best works by young artists like Jean-Michel Basquiat, Eric Fischel, and Anselm Kiefer. They bought photographs by Cindy Sherman and sculpture by Jeff Koons. They collected works made here in Los Angeles by John Baldessari, Robert Therrien, and Larry Pittman. They purchased challenging political images by Barbara Kruger and Leon Gallup. The media, the art market, and the artists took notice. I remember when Eli came, uh, he's very, um, he had, you know, a suit and tie, and I, I say this is a businessman, and he's from that world. I'm very respectful of him that he's entered this crazy world. In Los Angeles and in New York, the Broads visited artists at their studios to see what they were up to and to purchase their work. Eli and uh, Edie together have had a tremendous uh, impact uh, in my life as an artist. Their support has been very meaningful. And as individuals, as friends, they're wonderful. When Eli and Edie would make a relationship with an artist, Cindy Sherman is an example, buying early pictures when she was still, you know, at the front desk of an art gallery. I'm told he's my biggest collector. And uh, from what I've seen, um, it looks like it. When the Broads acquire their first work by an artist, it sets in motion a personal relationship with that artist and their body of work over time. I've always thought of them as, you know, really dedicated collectors, you know, and, and it, you know, it doesn't happen often that people, you know, just start with an artist who's quite young and then continue over the years. The Broads had collected so much art, they ran out of wall space in their home. They wanted to keep collecting and also help museums show more contemporary art. So they established the Broad Art Foundation. The foundation lends artworks to museums around the world. They assembled a staff to run the foundation, including curator Joanne Heiler, the founding director of the Broad. The Broads really, from the very beginning, put these public and private concerns together, this notion of a real genuine passion for art together with a strong desire to share it. The foundation allows them to keep collecting and to keep the work public. Anything that has the word public, for the public, showing it in the public so that the public can come and experience it, I'm all for. The foundation has made more than 8,000 loans to over 500 public museums and galleries worldwide. Over the course of the late 19th and 20th century, the American museum world has been dotted with individual institutions that were created by people who were incredible collectors. For decades, Eli envisioned a revitalized civic and cultural center right here in downtown Los Angeles. He was the founding chairman of the Museum of Contemporary Art just across the street. He also led the campaign to build Walt Disney Concert Hall. This is a great city. It's been very good to me. We want to give back. And I think uh, this is a gift to the people of Los Angeles and the public. And you know, we're really fortunate to be able to do that. And all the while, Eli and Edie's art collection has continued to grow. The collection started to feel that much more like a museum collection because we were starting to cover not just a decade or a decade or two, but you know, four and five decades of art history. A permanent home for the more than 2,000 works by some 200 artists would allow more loans to museums around the world, more works on view in Los Angeles, and make it possible to house the growing collection all in one place. This is a tall order for one building. The world-renowned architecture firm of Diller, Scofidio, and Renfro were chosen to design the Broad with their intriguing veil and vault plan. There would be this relationship between what we call the veil and the vault. So we imagine that the collection would be housed in the vault, which would be organic in shape, would be volumetric, would be more opaque, but would always be seen inside of the veil, which was a five-sided, porous, 
kind of uh, organism. The structure of the building was also the way that it allowed light to come in in a very diffuse way. While you view art in the galleries, you are either walking on top of or beneath the vault. As you transition from floor to floor, you move through the vault. Most architects would hide storage, but DSR took a different approach. 36 million pounds of concrete and steel forming the curving, complex honeycomb pattern channels light into the galleries and marks the building as an unusual place. A place for seeing the unexpected, the challenging, the extraordinary. The museum presents exhibitions, talks, and performances to foster a public dialogue about the ideas and concepts in contemporary art. Art is supposed to be this living, vital conversation between, you know, more than just an artist and a collector, but artists and, you know, as many eyes as can view the work. It's a place within the world that when people are interested in the late 20th century American art, you're going to think of the bro. Making art more accessible opens the conversation of possibilities of what art can be. Eli and Edie's collection isn't just an assembly of contemporary art. It's become a portrait of its era, ever evolving through new acquisitions and new artists. So what do they hope people will experience when they visit the Broad? To enjoy it. To learn about art. I hope they'll come back and look at things more than once and have favorite paintings. We hope it'll be an educational experience for them. And maybe when they go someplace else, they'll recognize something from having seen it at our museum. The Broad is the realization of Eli and Edie's dream of making their collection of contemporary art accessible to as many people as possible.